Okay. So I'll call you back from my laptop. Okay. Great. So I'll disconnect and call you right. back. Right. Okay. Okay, great. Ah, fantastic. So I think what we can do is just get into the... We can, can just begin. And how about we... I'll just start with a blank spreadsheet. And what I'm going to try to do is, is just go through things. And I don't think... Oh, thank you. Oh, you've got everything. So you go to... Uh, uh, let's just open a spreadsheet first. So just open a blank spreadsheet first. Just any uh, a blank one. So go, go to Excel. Just go to Excel. Perfect. Ah, great. Okay. And then here, here's the other thing just to get you started to open. Can you go to those files? Just open one single file. Go, go to those chapters. And you go to, uh, um, go back to chapter number one. So go, go back up. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, uh, back, back to, can you, can you hear okay? Uh, sir, how do I uh, record this session? Uh, can you just, right there, just type 1 slash 1 slash 2018. Now, if, good, 19 is fine. Now, if you... Oh, yeah, maybe that you like that format better. Just to give you a little bit of shortcuts, if you press shift control one shift control one it just uh, gives you a number. If you press shift control 2 it gives you the time. If you press shift control 3 it gives you kind of a regular old date format that's more European. Now, can you go up one and I think, would you mind if we just made an annual model for now? It's no... Making a monthly model is just as easy. Uh, can you hear me now? Sorry about that. I don't know what's happening. No, I think it's my fault. Something's happening on my side. Let me... Uh, 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 so go back to G1. Go to G1 again. Sorry. I'll keep uh, yes. trying. You can hear me now, right? Yes, and, I entered one there. And then press... And we are developing an annual model. Yeah, and, and press Alt-E. And then take your hands off the computer and press I-S. And then tab, just press the tab key. And when you press the tab key, go to make it about... Let's make it 40 years. And that the reason we're making it 40 years, press enter, is 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 and and that that EIS is a nice little tool because because it it's a it's a way to really quickly move forward in in Excel. Okay? Now now if you go down to the let let's uh, uh uh, how, how about this? Go down to, to uh, row number three. And in row number three, just type 100. Just type 100. And then you pre after you type the 100, again, your open file, why don't you go to file from here? Let's open that generic... Whoops. Open that generic macros file. Go to file and open it and open it from the uh, um, go to browse or something and open it from this just just open it again and now go back to your sheet let's try it one more time oh my yeah, god you, you don't really have to you shouldn't really have to but go 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 to your and now try shift control r again now it is working oh. Interesting. My fault. Go up to, now go up underneath the one. Let's go back and put our date in. Go back to the, uh, 
go back to that and put 1 slash 1 slash 2018. And then you you uh, go go to now go to H2. Let's just increment that by a year. So just put an equal sign and type E. Wait, no, no, don't add it. That just adds a day. So you put equal E date, E. And now tab, wait, just tab. Just hit the tab key. Because, because, yeah, just hit the tab key there. And then go back to the last date. Go back to the earlier date and put comma 12. And that, what that does is it just takes you, and then press Shift Control R again, and then it's just gonna get the the uh, uh, it's just gonna put in all the dates. Okay. Yes, sir. Great. So here's the big deal about project finance compared to just about any other kind of finance. It's so much of project finance is getting dates correct and getting an understanding how things change for different phases of the project. You, got, you have a construction phase, a development phase, a, a, a operating phase, and during each phase the risks change and the accounting changes and the, you know, uh, uh, some of the operations change as just a project gets older. For me, that's what makes it so different than traditional finance, where you've got a company that kind of just goes up and down, they have some good years and bad years. So the, one of the real keys is to get the dates right. That's why I did that first, and that's why we're just going to kind of start with the dates. Can you go down to that 100? Let's just delete that. Go down to the 100. Shift, control, right arrow, and delete. Okay, and then, now let's go, uh, uh, let's go, so, back. yes? Just to, just to uh, I mean, um, interrupt uh, for one minute. Uh, sir, uh, I'll be recording this. I'm going to show this to my class students. I'm, I'm recording it. I'm, I'm having a little bit of problems, but I think it's working okay. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Okay, we'll see if it really works. Okay, we, uh, 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 that's, uh, so it's kind of an experiment. Great. Now, if you go, uh, th that's why, by the way, that's why the thing went quiet on us, because to the, the, the next, why don't you just go down a few lines and just put up there, up, maybe up uh, across to H, okay? And all I want to say here is when we evaluate a project finance, the big things in terms of finance is putting the IRR on the project. Put project IRR. That's what I think you should you, you know, you, we need to understand that. That's the rate of return. So just type project IRR. That's going to be output number one. Okay. And then... Yeah, just like that. We're going to... It's going to be cleaned up later. Don't worry. And then below that, put equity IRR. And, and we need to understand what those things mean in any kind of finance. That's just the IRR is the, is the rate of return the project earns over its entire life. It's different. It's almost the same as return on equity. But it's, you know, you can't, I want to explain to you why you can't compute return on equity really for a project. You have to compute the IRR. And you if you explain the IRR, I don't know if you've done this in other classes, but that's the, you can explain it as the discount rate that makes the NPV equal to zero, which is, for me, a horrible explanation. The real explanation is how, how fast does the money grow when you invest it in a project? And then you go, why don't you call, go across to column J, and in column J, go up and put the DSCR. That's the 
That's the debt service coverage ratio. That's the primary thing the bank really looks at. And we're going to put an operational analysis and a banking analysis. Now, the other thing the bank could look at is the debt to capital. How much debt do you put in as a percentage of the capital? So why don't you put debt to capital? And then go down and put another... Debt to capital? Uh, why don't you put something called LLCR down below that? That stands for the loan life coverage ratio. I want to try to explain just a little bit you know, wh how, why these ratios are used and how they are used. Okay, that's what we're going to end up with. You can put equity to capital as one minus the debt too, but those are the big things we want out. Now let's figure out how to get there. Can you go back to, how about go back to column, let's go to A4. And because of the timing, go back to A4, set a, let's set some timing assumptions. Let's start with the assumptions. And again, this, it sounds like we're wasting, so just type timing assumptions. And then you go down, and let's go down to B, B5 or something. And then put, why don't you put project start date? That, this is when we're going to, we have a, 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 a green field. And we're just going to, we're just going to put some, uh, 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 we're going to start from absolutely nothing. Can you make D a, a, a wider column? Make D wider. Okay. And then go to column E, and this might sound really silly to you, but go up to column E, E I'm E5, sorry about that. And then in E5, just, uh, can you type the, 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 uh, just type the word date. And can you give me one second? I'm, I'm going to stop starting the record button. This time I think it's okay. Okay. Hmm. Can you hear me still? Yes, sir. Okay. Just go up there and let's, uh, uh, Let's put the start date for now as go into column F and in column F just put the 1-1-2018 again, just the same date that we started with. Now the next thing you do is go down and you can press shift control 3 there, very good. And then underneath the project start date, can you go down? Uh, go down to B B six B six, and in B six, go go all B six B is in boy, and 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 put then let's put the development timing. This is the time period where you get all your permits, you do all your feasibility study. It's by far the riskiest time of the project. And then let's go, in, in, go to column E, and in column E, put, put year, up, up in E6, just put year. So, you know, especially go, go up to E6. I would encourage all people who are doing Excel to carefully document the units of every single assumption that you do. And then just, let, let's say the development period takes two years, just type two. Okay, and then press, and then go below the development timing, and go to to C uh, to C. Uh, I'm sorry, to 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 B B a uh, uh, seven, and put the financial close date. That's the first big date of a project. Put financial close date, and then. For the financial close date, put a date again. 
And and this time use our E date one more time. Okay. Type E date. So type equal E, tab, and then just tab. Go up to the start date, the 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 that one, and put a comma and go up to the Number, no, don't, uh, yes, 12 times the 2. Exactly, you had it right. 12, 12 months, but multiply that by the, by not, uh, not by the number 2, just the 2 above. Because then we can press Enter, then you can change that date around, okay? And press Shift, Control, 3 again. Okay, and then we get the date. Now, let's just... Do some boring old or some coloring. Is that okay? Can you make, if you press Shift F11, you get a new sheet. Press Shift F11. And let's just pretend for a minute, go down and just put uh, uh, development years. Okay? And anywhere, it doesn't matter. You'll see what I'm doing. Just put development years. And then pretend the go to C C C one and in C one just type the number two again. That's just the number two. Don't hit any color yet. I'll I'll show you what we'll do. And then go down to the sheet two and re make that tab color. Click on sheet two. Right click on the on the sheet name and make it a red tab color or something. So you see that you you, you right click again. Yes, good. And then oh, no, the sheet. Make the sheet name right down down there. Go up to tab color just a little bit up there. And then just click on that. Okay, great. And why don't you rename a, a, a sheet to? Well, let's call it our data book. That's what people do in project finance. This can be a messy thing where you keep track of all your underlying data. And let's make sheet one, let's make that the name, let's call that our financial model. So go to sheet one and just rename sheet one. Okay, You're very good. And then now if you press, do you see at the bottom there it says press that red thing that says color sheet up at the top the, uh, up there uh, there we go just click on that and what it'll do is then it'll just go and figure out what's an input and all that and you see where it says the development timing there for number two take that number two now go to the number two and, and put an equal sign and go back to the data book and just click on that number two. Press enter. And then press shift control, uh, control alt C once again, control alt C. And then press color sheet again. Okay, and then do you see it, it made it a red color. That was the only thing. And the reason, of course, it's a red color is it comes from the red sheet. So, enough of that. Sorry about the coloring, but that we can keep recoloring it as we, we keep going down. Okay, now let's go, after the financial close, can you go to, to B, or can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Can you go to B8? Let's put the construction period. So after, just type a construction period. And let's make that years again. So let's put that in years. And let's say it takes uh, four years to construct. Now the big deal here, don't worry about the coloring, of course, right now. Press Enter. Okay. The... Um, uh, uh, the once you are finished with the construction period, go down to B B nine and put the commercial operation date. That's when the project begins operation. And 
and make that a uh, uh, a date as well, and then put an equal e date, and go up to the tab tab, go up to the financial close date up, and put a comma, and go up to the four, and multiply it by twelve. Now the the, the key thing behind doing this, press shift control 3 again, that if you change the, the periods, you, you want a flexible model so you can change any of the timing. So if you go and change that number 4 to a 5, we just had a delay in construction. So you go up to F8 and go up to F8 and just change that to 5, okay, and then everything changes. You want a really flexible kind of model. And then the next thing you do is you go to B10, and you put operation period, and you, you put year again, and you put, let's make it a 25-year thing. And then you go down and you go, the final thing is you put decommissioning period. Okay. Now, uh, you, and let's put that as our final date. This is the last date we'll use. And put an equal sign and you go up to the commercial operation date, put equal E date again, and go up to that one, and you put a comma, and go to the 25, and multiply that by 12. So we've got all our dates set up, which is a crucial thing, shift control 3 again, that's a crucial thing in the uh, uh, project finance. Now, here's what typically gets done with the dates. We'll just do a couple of these, actually. Go up to that 100. We're going to delete that 100. Go up to line 3. Shift, control, right arrow. Shift, control, right arrow. Just press the delete button. And then go back to B3. Go back to B3. B3. B is in boy 3. And put um, uh, 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 Put the, let's put the development period in. Just type development period. You want me to type development period? Exactly. And here, here's what you do. You recognize that the word digital computers comes from digits, comes from one and zeros. It's still one of the most useful things you can do. And the next thing you want to do is with Every single line, every single line, you want to show th where things come from. So what I want you to do is go to E3. It's going to look funny. Put an equal sign. Go to that uh, uh, financial close date, the 1 January of, uh, of 2020, and press Enter. And then you go to G... Three. You go to G3 and you put an equal sign and you go up one and make it less than, uh, put a less than sign and go back to E3. And that technique where you are very transparent with the models, where you show exactly what you're doing on every step. And you press the F4 button because because that you know you, we're going to copy this across the sheet. And press so press F4 right now. Uh, F is in Fred or Frank or press F4. Does that work? You might have to press function F4. What kind of computer do you have? Over. Put an equal sign. Go up to the date first. Make it less than or equal to. No, just less than. I was wrong with the equal. Just less than, sorry. And go back to the 120. Press F4. Press Enter. That should be true. And then Shift-Control 
uh, right arrow, R, shift control, no, no, uh, sorry, shift control R. Oh, you're doing it like that. You could just press shift control R. That's kind of why I did it, but you did it faster anyway. So then let's, uh, um, now let go down one. Yeah, just one, just one. Um, just press insert a couple of lines. Press Alt I R right there. Alt I R, and then press F four. That just repeats it. Okay, and let's put next the construction period. And I, I, I you, you sound you're very good in Excel, so you probably know that true is equal to one normally, and false is equal to zero. So when you multiply things by true, true and false, it turns them on and off. So now put an equal sign, the construction period go down, it starts at 120. It starts at that same 1 January 20, up one, the date, because we want to compare that and then go to F and put, no, just, just one over, back to F, I'm sorry, F as in Frank, or put an equal sign and go down, put an equal sign. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, and go down to commercial operation date. Press enter. And then you put a e go to G and put an equal and. This time put an equal and. And put A and D. A no, just an A and, a and the word and. The word and. Tab. And go up to the 1 January of 18. And then make it greater than or equal to. This time, no, no, greater than. A greater than sign, greater or equal. And go to the 1 January 20 again. The, the first one. Press F4. And then put a comma. Go back up to that date. And make it less than the a uh, uh, 1 January of 25. The back in F. In, in, in column F. Go back to column F. No, no. Strictly less than or strictly less than equal to? Uh, less than. It's just less than. We'll see why in, in just a minute. Press F4. Because as soon press F4, when you hit the operation in 1 January of 25, you're starting the project. So press Shift Control R. So you would get a range which is uh, basically uh, true, and uh, then false, and, and yeah. so, right. So it's just true until you hit period eight up there, and then it goes to false. And and now let's do the last one. Go underneath the construction period, and and put the operation period. And this time, put an e, go to column E, put an equal sign, and go to the 1 January of 25, and then press Enter, and then go across and go to F and put the equal to the, the 1 January of 50, the decommissioning period. And that, for me, that, that idea, that simple idea of putting all of every time you, just about every time you, you have a, a, a formula, putting the things to the, over to the left. And let's use the and thing again. Go across to, to G. G. Uh, G okay. col column G, and we're going to use equal and again. And then go up to the uh, go up to the date first, the date, and make it greater than or equal to. And go to the one January of twenty five. Press F four, and then put a comma, and go back up to the date again. And make it less than and and F four. Press Enter. Now. If you don't believe Shift Control uh, R, why don't you go click on column G? Uh, 
just to the whole column G and press Alt I C just to insert a column. Or if you press Alt I C, that's fine, but that would do it too. Don't worry. That's and then put. Why don't you go to G five? Go to G five for a minute. Put equal count if. Tab, and just go to column H, shift control right arrow and put comma true, and all that's doing is is testing whether how many trues you have. Press enter and press shift control one, there shift control one, and that shows you you have the right number of trues. So I'm just trying to prove that that less than and the less than an equal sign on all that was the correct thing to do. And you could yes, very good. Okay, and now if you go back to, you know, the first column, you go back to, if you change any of those kind of things, let's make the construction period four again. Go down to the row 10, uh, uh, F, F, F10. F is uh, in, so? F is uh, in, uh, what should we use for F? So? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, can I just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if, if this is the right time, can I ask a simple doubt for my students? Because uh, uh, when I have taught them budget financing, I have taught them only about two phases, that is the development phase and the, uh, oper uh, sorry, construction phase and the uh, operating phase. Uh, okay. You so know, what is five years. And, and the development phase is where you spend very little money but that's before the financial close. That's where you, the development so, phase. I understand. You're you basically talking about the uh, clearances and all those things. Yeah. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Do you okay, want to do this? No, no, no. Perfectly. What I'm saying is, uh, could you please speak of uh, both the periods once uh, so that the students benefit? The development period and the decommissioning period. The decommissioning period is just kind of the end of the life. It just reflects that when we're going to compute all of our financial statistics, it's going to be over the whole entire life. So that's that's really, you know, not a special period. That's just a date. Okay. That's just a convenient way to, to Are do you the model. that during this period, the cash flows will be starting to decline? Or that's when we're finished. That's when we're, we die. That's the... Eventually, we'll um, finish it off. That, that's the end of the concession period if you've got a toll road or the end of the, you know, the lifetime of a solar panel or the end of the lifetime of a, you know, a, a, a building or whatever. Okay. So, how about this? Is that okay? Well, let's, okay. let's try to show it. Now, now go down to maybe A15. And let's type uh, let's type some operating assumptions. For me, it's absolutely essential to keep the operations separate from the uh, financing. And for the operations, why don't we put first a development cost? So go into B. Uh, uh, 16. Yeah, 16 and put development cost. And why don't we put this, well, let's, what units? Let's put this in rupee or something. Is that okay? Or millions yes. of rupee or billions of rupee or something, okay? Uh, and then just put a number. How about, how about let's just put uh, 50 as our, as our, as our development cost. And then, and that's not a very big number, number, typically. That's a small number. And then go to, why don't you put EPC costs just below the development cost? Engineering procurement and construction costs. Right, that's your real contract. So, you know, if you, I'm sure when you teach the project finance, really the model is about modeling, for me, the way I tried to describe it, it's modeling the operation of a, plant and putting the contracts around it. Let's make that, hmm, let's make that 
seven hundred or something. It's much much bigger than the development cost. That doesn't mean the development cost is not important. The problem with the development cost is you've got a low probability of it working. By the time you hit construction, all the contracts are signed. That small development cost, if there's only a 10% probability of getting it, it really gets magnified. But that's a different issue. And then let's go down and just let's do a couple of little Excel things. Go, why don't you go down one? And let's, let's make it really simple for now. Is that okay? Let's just put, uh, go down one more. Go down one more. Let's put revenues in. Now, these revenues could be part of a PPA contract. They could inflate. They could do a whole thing. But to illustrate kind of some Excel, let's put INR millions again. And, and then uh, let's go across to column F and go up one, up one, up one, and put an equal sign and go to the commercial operation date. Uh, how, uh, down one, I'm sorry, wait, wait, escape. Es escape, let's go down one, down to line 19. Put an equal sign, go to that uh, uh, commercial operation date. And then press enter. And let's move across, cross, and let's say, how about this? Let's say we get, uh, hmm, in year, in year one, let's just make an assumption, go down to F20. This could be a toll road or something. Let's say we only get about 70 in year one. And then let's go, and, and then go up to column uh, uh, G, press enter. Uh, uh, go up to G, G19, go up there. Put an equal E date, oops. Sorry, can you hear me? E date. Yes and tab and go back to that date and maybe put comma 12. Let's just do one year. And then press enter, shift control three. And then you can go to H, go just across to H, the same row, put control R. Let's just add one more row, control R. And then go to the next one, but this time put equal E date and tab, uh, tab and go back one and put comma, um, let's say, uh, 36 months. So this time we're going to skip a few years. Shift control three. And then let's go, uh, uh, go across and press control R. So, and what I'm going to show you is how to not use. I would say don't use VLOOKUP, don't use match index, use just regular old lookup. That's why I'm setting up the assumptions. And let's go down to G20. Go down to G20 and put perhaps, uh, go down and put 100 maybe. And then in the next one, how about 100 and just type 100. And how about 100 and... Uh, 10 and then 120 and 125. So we're just putting different numbers in in here. And how about let's go down underneath the revenues and then go down. How about we'll put fix go skip one line and maybe we'll we'll go, we'll put fixed O and M expenses. And let's. Uh, make that uh, how about we'll put in and I'm gonna make them pretty small let's make them uh, five in the first year seven in the second year you know eight and ten and ten is that okay yes. and here's what I'm trying to show you now if you change of course the construction period up in line 10 if you go up to line 10 uh, uh, and change that number five to three, something like that, then press enter, and then all those dates change, right? All the dates that you just did change. Okay? And, and so I'm just showing you a couple of things. How about we'll put, let's put variable O&M expense, and, you know, 
This is such basic economics, but, you know, you'd, you'd rather have a variable expense than a fixed expense, because a variable expense, if the revenues or the, or, or the units you're selling, the tolls go down or something, why don't you go down and put, instead of this time, put percent. Let's just make this a percent. We'll just make this a percent of revenues. And that's just a simple idea that I'd rather have a variable cost than a fixed cost. It's kind of operating level. Don't put it and don't multiply it yet. We'll do that later. Just put, for now, eight percent. Just type in eight percent. This is just whoops. Sorry, this is just still an input. Just type in eight percent. No, where do I put it? Just right there, eight percent. Okay, great. Of course, now if you press Control Alt C again, uh, press Control Alt C, and just press Color Sheet again. You don't have to do anything special. Then it'll just update all of that, you know, and so so you're seeing that kind of they're blue. Now let's we're gonna in in the next section. Just a minute. In the next section, go to A. 25, uh, go to A25 and put uh, uh, financing assumptions. Now, late, how, about, how about we'll put taxes in later? And we're even going to put the financing assumptions in later. And now skip down a couple of more rows. Oh, uh, should I write uh, financing assumptions? Yes, exactly. I'm going to leave them blank for now, though. And what, if you don't mind, Manish, I think I want to finish and get the project IRR, and then can we can we continue this tomorrow or the next day or something? Would you mind that? No, no problem. So, fine. so let's put operating analysis. And I just want, you know, here in my class today, there were these young people who thought they were so smart with Excel and all this. And they used all these nice, complicated commands. And here's what I think. I think you need only a few commands, and you have to use them really real well. And the first command to use is go up, go up to the timeline. Go up and go to H6. Go to H6. And go and press Alt W F F. Alt W F F. That just freezes the panes. Okay? And then you go down. And I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Let's go down. Uh, uh, keep going down to the operating analysis. And why don't you go into B30? Go to B30. and put revenues. And what we want to do, and I purposely kind of skipped a couple of lines over there. And if you go to column H, go to H30, put an equal sign, and type lookup, L-O-O, -O, no V lookup, no H, tab, tab, and then click with the mouse, click on that date, 1 January of 18. Now, I just made a mistake, too. And put a comma. And then click on line number 19, the whole line number 19. And then put another comma. And click on the whole line number 20. Press Enter. And what that does, we're going to practice it about three times. Um, and we're going to have to fix something, too. Shift, Control, R. You're going to have to press Shift, Control, R twice, by the way. Press Shift, Control, R. And then go to that last NA and press Shift, Control, R again. Okay, and then what you see what it does is it just is like the lookup. It looks up, depending on those years, the 1 January 20, the... 1 January 25, it looks them up and just fills in the numbers. And if, if you've got a space in between it, 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 it kind of continues the number. 
So you can see that 110 continued. Okay. Let's fix the NA. Could you go up to F, F20? Uh, go up to F20. Uh, go up one. Can you select all of those? Go down, shift down, shift down. We're just going to move those. Shift down to, to 22. Shift down again. And shift control right arrow, not control R. Shift control right arrow. And control X. And then move it to column G. Just move it over one to column G. And then just put in, in column F, go back to column F19 and put an equal sign and just go up to the start date for the entire project. Go up, uh, upstairs, there, uh, very good. Uh, the, no, the project start date, up one, even higher, even higher, enter. What that does now, if you go down, uh, that just puts zeros in there. Because what it's doing is it's saying, ah, oh, from January 1. Oh. Yeah, where's Brooke? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Do you see kind of how it works? Let, let's put fixed O&M. Let's just do the same thing with fixed O&M so you see how that works. So go go up to 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 B, B31. Go to B31. The down in operating analysis so b for boy number 31 and put um uh, uh, operating expenses okay and do the same thing go across to column h put an equal lookup no v no h equal lookup tab Go up to the date, H, H2, uh, uh, H2, H2, higher. That says take that date and then put a comma and look up that date and go to line 19 again, line 19, and click on the entire line and you put a comma and you click on line 22, the entire line 22. Press enter. And what that does is it says, look at th that date, find the corresponding date in the, in the little, you know, uh, uh, input section, shift control R, and it just, whoops, did that not work? Try again. Oh, no, that should have worked. Shift control R for Romeo. And then it just puts all those dates. So can you see that there are three eights and then it goes up to 10 and just holds it flat. And it should go all the way to the end of the sheet. Okay. And then let's uh, go down and let's put variable costs. And what I would do for variable cost is just to document what you're doing, I would go into column F. I would go into column F, go back to, no, F, F32. F32. F is in front, maybe, back one. Put an equal sign and just go up and get that 8%. Just go up and get press enter. And the idea then is just to show people that they should document everything. Everything should be easy to read and easy to find. And you go across to column H, go, go across to column H and put an equal sign and go up to the revenues up and, and multiply that and go back to H and press F4 again, shift control R. And then, you know, we're finished. And then why don't you compute kind of a key number below there how about going to 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 uh, C C33 and compute EBITDA? That's our earnings that we get, revenues minus expenses, before any interest or taxes or depreciation or anything else. So put EBITDA, and then go across and go to column H. 
and put an equal sign, and you go up to the revenues in line 30, and subtract the expenses in line 31, and then in 32. And you've got the kind of the starting point. Okay, and you can go go back to EBITDA, go to B, C, C, uh, C, C, press shift control right arrow twice, and press shift control E for EBITDA, Edward, and then that just gives you a little underline. Press go down, I'll show you how to make your own little shortcut later, but that's okay. And actually, go up to EBITDA just for a minute. Okay, press shift control right arrow twice. Once again, and press F11. That's just going to make a, 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 you know, a graph. And if you press Alt-E, we'll make much nicer graphs in a minute. Press Alt-E first, and then the letter L. That's just going to, L for, I don't know, delete, press enter. You just press enter and it deletes it. Okay. And then go down. How about, and then let's just finish a couple of things. Now, now go down to maybe skip a space and go back to column B and go down. And let's go down one. Let's put the development costs in. Now, our total development costs were 50. And I would go to column F, go to column F, and put an equal sign and go up to the 50. And then press Enter. And then go to column G. Whoops. Go to column G, put an equal sign, and go up to the... Uh, development period, the two years, go up to go up a little higher, all the way up. Oh, wait, uh, find the two, the development timing. Oh, you could take it from there. That's fine. I was going to take it from F seven, but that's fine. Taking it from there is fine too. Press enter. It doesn't matter. It two the development timing. That that's right. Press enter, and then go across, and this is how we're going to use those switches we did up at the top. Uh, put an equal sign, take that 50, go back to the 50, F4, divide it by the 2, F4, and we're not finished, and F4, does F4 not work on that? And then multiply it by the development period switch, that thing in H3 with the mouse. You can use the mouse or yeah, and, and press Enter. And then just press Shift-Control-R. And what that does is it just... Yeah, exactly. So if you now change the development period and make the development period three years, why don't we go up to the top and just change that? So go up to the, go, go up and let's just change, even, ah, uh, we put it in the red book. Let's leave it for now. Let's leave it. Let's go down and do the same thing with the construction costs. Okay, and uh, then we're just going to do exactly the same thing, but we're going to use, uh, go across to column F, put an equal sign, and go up to the 700, very good. Press enter and go across and put an equal sign and go up to the uh, three and just go across and put an equal sign, press the, go back to the 700, press F4, press F4 first on both of them. Because you know, whenever you take things from those things and multiply that by the construction period and not the, uh, 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 this one. and press enter and now I realize I made a mistake uh, press shift control that's fine you can press shift control 1 if you want yeah, it's fine. Uh, 
shift control one that just can you go up to the revenues and I made a mistake go up to the revenues and to the operating expenses the lookup function no down I'm sorry in line 30 go up to line 30 and multiply that end of that lookup go to the end of that lookup and multiply that by the operating period because right now we're not turning it off after we are finished and we decommission it. Sorry, I multiply that by the operating in number five, that one. Just press enter. And shift control one maybe. To, and shift control R. Oh, we have to do it again. The reason you have to do that again is because it looked up one. And then you do the same, go down to the operating expense, very the operating expenses, and do the same thing. Put uh, press F two, multiply that, and go up to the press enter. Very good. Shift Control one, Shift Control R, and press Shift down, Shift down twice. No, uh, up, up one. Shift Control right arrow. Uh, shift control down arrow twice. One more, one more, one more. Shift control one just to get the formatting. Okay, and now we're now go back to 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 row thirty. Let's go to row number thirty eight. And go back to to B thirty eight. B a uh, C thirty eight. And let's see, let's put free cash flow or pre-tax cash flow. This is the fundamental cash flow. And this is a lot of the analysis. And all of the thinking should be, can we really get the revenues? What are real operating costs going to be? And put an equal sign and take that EBITDA minus the development cost minus the construction cost and press shift control R. Okay, and then you, you go down and uh, uh, you can then just go below free cash flow. Oh, sorry. And put, go, go back to column, you know, uh, 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 C and put project IRR. So we've got our first kind of number. So can you go back to, yeah, wherever you want to go, maybe C39 or something. Just right under C39, put Project IRR. And then go to column E or F, and just put equal IRR. And if you're lazy, this works, this is fine. It's maybe not a really great idea to do, but you can tab. And you can click on line 38, the whole line. If you can do it like that too, press Enter. Okay, either your your way is better, but press enter, good. Hello. No, just to, you don't need a guess. Shift control P maybe. That just gives you a that shift control P is just a little thing. And if you go up to the top now, we've got one of our outputs. If you go up to uh, uh, upstairs, keep going up stairs now and go back maybe to you know right. And just put next to project IRR, go down, put an equal sign, and go down and get that, go upstairs and get that project IRR, that 10.27. Okay? So one is kind of finished. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to include the financing. Now, I would make a really big deal. I'm sure teachers in Harvard Business School, they never do this. If you're, if that IRR is too high, you're either stealing from the government or you're making a project that is too good to be true. If the, pro, if the IRR is less than the interest rate, you should go home. Figuring out what a reasonable number for that rate of return is is a really big deal. If you, sorry, I missed the loan. If you had the, 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 you know, if you had no 
debt at all, you would be finished right now. The project, that rate of return would be the 10%, you'd be finished. So the rest of it is trying to get a higher equity IRR by putting some debt into the project. But would you, would you mind if we stopped here and then just finish this uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day or some, sometime? Is that okay? Sir, I just want yes. to request, would I get the video to share the Yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, see how it worked. So I'm going to, we might have to edit it a lot, you know, all of those kind of things at the beginning. Is that okay? No problem. I'll, I'll, uh, so I'll try to, yeah, I, I'm going to save it and uh, get it. I think your idea is fantastic. I love it, Manish. It's really cool what you're doing. You're really innovative. You really, really, really are. What a good teacher you must be. Fantastic. No, no, much better than me. Oh, especially after today. Okay. So I'm going to kind of see how it all worked. Thank you so much. I'm a lot from the exposure and... Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the